Jonathan and we're moving on to Unit 2 of AP Calculus AB and BC. This unit makes up 10 to 12 percent of Calculus AB and 4 to 7 percent of BC and it's a key unit that lays the foundation for the rest of both courses. On the left you can see all the topics in Unit 2, 2.1 through 2.10. Let's start off with Topic 2.1, defining average and instantaneous rates of change at a point. Um, let's start off with the two limit definitions of a derivative shown here on the left. You need to have both these definitions memorized and be able to recognize limits in this form. On to some interpretations, the main thing to know is that calculus is really all about change. Um, derivatives are a new way of thinking about change because they apply to instantaneous change, not average change like slopes in algebra. Here in topic 2.2, we can see some common notations for a derivative right here. And dy dx is sometimes helpful to use because it makes the derivative stand out. But overall, these are all interchangeable notations. So you also need to understand how derivatives and tangent lines are connected. In case you forgot, a tangent line is defined as the line that intersects a graph only once near the tangent point. The key connection is that the slope of the tangent line always equals the derivative of the function at that point, which we will see on this graph here. Let's get into an example. We have a question that asks us to find the tangent line to the graph y equals x squared to x equals 1, given that the derivative at that point is 2. So to solve this question, we have to use point-slope formula, which you might remember from algebra class. But it basically says it's a it's just a way of solving a linear equation. So y minus y1, where y1 is the y value, equals m, the slope, times x minus x1, where x is the x value. So we plug in x equals 1 to solve for y1, and y1 is actually 1. So, and then x1 is obviously x equals 1, so x1 is 1 as well. And then, based on what we just learned, that the slope of the tangent line is the derivative, we can replace m here, the slope, with dy dx, the derivative, and then we know that the derivative is 2 because it's given to us. So using the derivative here and plugging in 2, we can solve for the equation of the tangent line. Topic 2.3 is about how you can estimate derivatives without actually knowing the function. Remember that a derivative is kind of like a slope, just at two points instead of just at one point instead of two. But if we choose two points that are pretty close to each other, the slope is going to approximate the derivative. Let's do that in this example problem by finding the slope between x equals 3 and x equals 5, and using this to approximate the derivative at x equals 4. And keep in mind that we're using x equals 3 and x equals 5 because these are the nearest points. You always want to use the closest points to find the estimate of the derivative. So we just go through this process. Um, plugging these numbers into the slope formula, and we get 2 as our approximation for the derivative. And one other thing to keep in mind is that the slope between these two close points is called the slope of the secant line, not to be confused with secant, the trig function. That's completely under, completely unrelated. And then the derivative is the slope of the tangent line. You might see that um, those terms on a test or something like that. So topic 2.4 um, is about how differentiability and continuity are connected. And differentiability just means like whether you can differentiate a function. So there are three kind of key phrases to remember. Uh, differentiability implies continuity. A derivative cannot exist where the function doesn't. And then continuity does not imply differentiability. So I like to think of it as how a square is a rectangle, but a rectangle is not necessarily a square. So in both cases, the square is more specific than a rectangle, and then also being differentiable is more specific than being continuous. So just because you have something that's continuous doesn't mean that it has to be differentiable. And there are two kind of two main types of types of points where you have a continuous function that's not differentiable. So first of all, on this graph, you have the absolute value function. And at 0, there's like this sharp changing point that's called a cusp. 
and so the derivative is not defined right here. And then the other, the other reason a function that's continuous would not be differentiable is if there was a vertical tangent line. So on a graph that was like growing, 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 and then it just went straight up for a second, like right here. Um, so the derivative would kind of be like infinity if the derivative existed because the function is just going straight up. So the derivative also doesn't exist there, even though it's continuous. Topic 2.5, the power rule, introduces a helpful way for differentiating polynomials. The rule is that when you take the derivative of an x to the n term, you bring the exponent in front and then subtract one from the exponent and keep it there on top of the x. So we have two examples here. First of all, find the derivative of x squared. So we take the 2 and we put it in front and then we subtract 1 from the exponent to just get 2x. And then a trickier example right here is to differentiate this polynomial. So we just do the same thing. We take each derivative separately, which we'll actually talk more about in the next topic. But we take each exponent, bring it up front, and then we subtract 1 from each exponent. And also keep in mind that you can't forget about these coefficients right here, the 4, 2, and the 1. So um, you have to make sure that you multiply the coefficient by the exponent. Now onto topic 2.6. This is mostly trivial stuff. I mean, so it just says that the derivative of a sum or a scalar is the sum of the derivatives or the scalar times the derivative. Well, so those are the second and third points right here. And then the first point is that the derivative of any constant, like just a single number, is always zero. So these are helpful to keep in mind, but it, I mean, it's kind of obvious, but yeah, so you have to understand these properties. And then topic 2.7 is an important topic as it shows you how to take other derivatives like sine, cosine, e to the x and ln x. Sine and cosine derivatives are pretty easy to remember because they actually turn into each other when you differentiate each of them. But when you differentiate cosine, you have to tack on a negative sign. So sine turns into cosine, cosine turns into sine, but cosine, you have to tack on this negative sign. So cosine turns into negative sine. <coughs> and then the derivative of e to the x is really special because it's just itself, e to the x. And more broadly speaking, the derivative of an exponential with any base, a to the x, is a to the x plus this, I mean, times the ln a. So logs are also kind of similar. There's the special case where you have the natural log of x, and it's just 1 over x. But then when you take the derivative of any log base of x, you just get 1 over x, and then you also have to tag on this ln b to take care of the different base. So topic 2.8 is another important rule, the product rule, because it helps you differentiate the product of two functions. Basically, you take the derivative of the first one, f prime, multiplied by the second one, g, and then add the first one times the derivative of the second one, g prime of x. For example, let's take the derivative of x cubed times sine x. We just work through the formula. So we take the derivative of the first one, x cubed, and we get 3x squared. We multiply by the second one, sine x. And then we add the first one, x cubed, times the derivative of the second one, sine x, which turns into cosine x. And so this kind of shows how the other derivative rules are also um, they're really all kind of intertwined because you use them uh, in tandem a lot of the time. Now, topic 2.9, the quotient rule, tells you how to differentiate the quotient of two functions. And the formula right here might look kind of complicated, but I have a simple way of remembering it. So I take the high function, the I mean the numerator, and call it high and the denominator and call it low. And then I just say 
low d high minus high d low all over low squared is the derivative. So again, that's low d high minus high d low over low squared. You can kind of uh, use that saying to help you remember this formula. But anyways, let's go into an example. Differentiate f of x is sine x over x squared. So we take low x squared times d high. The derivative of sine again is cosine. And subtract high sine x times d low. And the derivative of x squared using the power rule is 2x. So that gets us the numerator. And then we do that all over low squared. And x squared squared is just x to the fourth. And then another example here, we have to differentiate this um, x cubed minus 2x squared over x. And when you see this, you might be tempted to just plug in the quotient rule right away and solve. But you actually don't need to because you can divide each term here by x. And that makes the derivative a lot easier because it just turns into a polynomial that you can use the power rule to solve. So whenever you're about to use the quotient rule, just kind of pause for a second and see if there's an easy way to simplify it into a derivative that's a little bit easier. The final topic is topic 2.10, which tells you how to differentiate all the other trig functions. Instead of memorizing all the derivatives, which are shown right here, by the way, you can set up this diagram and then use our special trick that we have. So what you do when you want to find the derivative of secant, tangent, cosecant, or cotangent is you, so let's divide this diagram into three parts. There are the edges and then the middle part. So you find on either edge the function you're trying to differentiate. So let's say secant. So you don't use, you never start off with the middle part of this diagram. You always start on the ends. So if we want to differentiate secant, we start right here, secant x. And then what you do is you go across the row in the opposite direction. So the derivative of secant is secant times tangent. And then let's check the table. And yes, derivative of secant is secant times tangent. And then if you're on the bottom row here, let's say you want to differentiate cotangent, you just go across the row in the opposite direction. So derivative of cotangent is negative cosecant times cosecant. So um, you have to either, you can either just write down this diagram and then use it pretty easily. You can also, you can write this diagram down on your tests and then you don't have to remember any of them anyways because you can just use the diagram or you can just memorize all of the trig derivatives, which is a little more tedious, but whatever works for you. So that's the last topic. And we are now done with Unit 2 of AP Calculus.